Let's continue our discussion of parametric and nonparametric tests and discuss analyzing three or more independent groups. In this section, we will introduce and discuss analysis of variance, usually referred to as ANOVA, and the Kruskal-Wallis test. Both tests are similar in structure to their two independent group analogs, the unpaired t-test and the Mann-Whitney test respectively, and are essentially generalizations of these tests to more than two groups. We will use the marathon runner data to illustrate both tests. It has been reported that there is a high prevalence of profound hypophosphatemia in runners who collapse in marathons. To examine the role of plasma phosphate concentrations in runner fitness, blood samples were taken from men running the same marathon. Samples were taken from 38 male runners who collapsed during the marathon. This group is referred to as the collapse group. 63 male runners of the same age group who finished successfully in the same average completion time and were occasional marathon runners. This group is referred to as the completed occasional runner group and will be denoted as COMPL-OCCAS. 29 male runners of the same age group who finished successfully in the same fast completion time and were regular marathon runners. This group is referred to as the completed regular runner group and will be denoted by COMPL-REG. The hypothesis of interest is that there will be differences in phosphate concentrations among the three groups of runners. Examining descriptive summaries of the three groups, we see that mean phosphate concentrations are lowest in the collapsed runners group and highest in the completed regular runners. The medians in all groups are very close to their respective means. The standard deviations do appear to vary somewhat between the groups with the collapsed group having the most variability. Lastly, we also note that the sample size for each of the groups is not the same. However, group size equality is not required for either of the tests we are discussing. Before going any further, let's address the obvious question first. Why not use the unpaired T or the Mann-Whitney test and simply perform pairwise mean or median comparisons for the three groups? This would involve three pairwise comparisons comparing the collapsed group with the completed occasional runner group, comparing the collapse, collapsed group with the completed regular runner group, and comparing the completed occasional runner group with the completed regular runner group. You already know the answer. The problem relates to multiple comparisons and the proliferation of type 1 error that occurs when more than one hypothesis test is conducted. It is fairly common for researchers unfamiliar with multiple comparison issues to simply conduct pairwise t-tests at a nominal alpha level of 0.05 when they have more than two groups to compare. This can become particularly unwieldy in laboratory research where there may potentially be many groups being simultaneously compared. Let's examine the null and alternative hypotheses for each of the tests. For analysis of variance, instead of hypothesizing the equality of two means, we simply hypothesize simultaneous equality of all of the means. For the marathon runner data, this means hypothesizing that the means of the three runner groups are equal. This makes intuitive sense. The first question we want to ask is whether any of the means are different from each other using a test that preserves an overall type 1 error rate across simultaneous comparison of multiple means. The alternative hypothesis is that not all of the means are equal, meaning that at least two of the means out of the total set of means are not equal to each other. Notice the generality of the alternative hypothesis. It does not specify which groups are different from each other. This is a key difference with the unpaired t-test. When there are only two groups being tested and the null hypothesis is rejected, there's no question which groups are different. However, with more than two groups, this question becomes more complicated. With three groups, as in our example, there are a total of three possible pairwise comparisons. With four groups, there are six possible pairwise comparisons. We will discuss this further in a minute. The corresponding null and alternative hypotheses for the Kruskal-Wallis test are analogous to the analysis of variance with the exception that the focus is on medians instead of means.
Let's assume you have rejected the null hypothesis for an analysis of variance. How do you determine which means are statistically significantly different from each other? It turns out that there are numerous methods for comparing means after rejecting the null hypothesis depending on the specific design of the study and the hypotheses of interest. Entire books are written about this subject. These details are beyond the scope of this course and also beyond the need of many standard clinical research studies. The key point to be aware of is the proliferation of error and making sure that the follow-up mean comparisons are performed in a way that preserves type 1 error rates. StatCrunch has taken the approach of providing a single method called the Tukey approach that ensures the overall alpha error remains at 0.05 across all pairwise comparisons in the study. When performing analysis of variance, StatCrunch provides a checkbox check that automatically generates two key simultaneous 95% confidence intervals for all pairwise mean comparisons. From discussions in previous modules, we know that from the 95% confidence interval, we can conclude whether or not the corresponding hypothesis test at 0.05 is statistically significant or not. Now what about similar procedures for the Kruskal-Wallace test? Follow-up median comparisons are not implemented in StatCrunch and most other software, and are rarely reported in the literature. Conceptually, one could perform pairwise median comparisons using the Mann-Whitney test and apply a Bonferroni bound, which we, we discussed when talking about multiple comparison issues. This would simply involve dividing alpha by the number of pairwise comparisons performed. However, we will not concern ourselves with follow-up median comparisons beyond mentioning this point. Let's examine the runner test results both for the analysis of variance and Kruskal-Wallis. Starting with the analysis of variance results. The p-value for the overall null hypothesis simultaneously comparing all means is generated from what is called an f-statistic. Note that the f-statistic has two sets of degrees of freedom associated with it, generally, generally referred to as the numerator degrees of freedom and denominator degrees of freedom, here equal to 2 and 127 respectively. The p-value for the ANOVA test is less than 0.0001 which is statistically significant and provides evidence that there are differences among the three runner groups. With the significant p-value for the null hypothesis, we are next interested in examining the Tukey simultaneous pairwise confidence intervals. Notice that the pairwise confidence intervals for all three comparisons are provided here. Because none of the confidence intervals include zero, we can state that all pairwise comparisons have p-values less than or equal to 0.05. Note that the minus signs for the last pairwise comparison are simply a function of the direction in which the confidence interval has been calculated and indicates that the mean for the completed occasional runner group is less than the mean for the completed regular runner group. The recommended approach for reporting ANOVA is to include all of the pieces shown here for the analysis of variance with, of course, a clinical interpretation of both the group means and the range of values for the difference between means provided by the confidence intervals. As you can see, without any follow-up median comparisons, the Kruskal-Wallis results are very brief. The chi-square statistic is analogous to the ANOVA F statistic. The degrees of freedom for the chi-square are simply equal to the number of groups minus 1, here equal to 2. The p-value generated from the chi-square statistic is less than 0 0.0001, which is practically the same as for the ANOVA and also shows statistical significance. The recommended approach for reporting is to include the chi-square statistic, the p-value, and the sample medians for the three groups. The F statistic is actually a ratio of variances. The numerator re represents the variability between the group means and the denominator represents the variability within the groups. Properties of the F statistic include the F statistic is a ratio of variances and is always positive valued. Under the null hypothesis of no difference between the groups, we would expect that the variability between the groups to be comparable to the variability within the groups, which would yield an F-statistic near 1. 
Under the alternative hypothesis, we would expect the variability between groups to be larger than the variability within groups. Thus, the larger f is, the smaller the p-value is. Degrees of freedom for the numerator is equal to the number of groups minus 1. Degrees of freedom for the denominator is equal to the total sample size minus the degrees of freedom for the numerator. The test assumptions of the analysis of variance are essentially identical to those of the unpaired t-test, with appropriate consideration for having more than two groups. Specifically, the Gaussian assumption here applies to the values in each of the groups and the central limit theorem can be appealed to provided the group sizes are large enough. The equality of variances assumption for ANOVA requires that the variance of all groups be equal. The assumptions of the Kruskal-Wallis test are essentially identical to those of analysis of variance, with the exception that there is no requirement for either a Gaussian population distribution assumption or equality of all variances. Thus, although it can be used under less restrictive assumptions, it fails to provide the rich follow-up pairwise information associated with analysis of variance. This concludes our discussion of analyzing continuous data from three or more independent groups.